And then you can get into seasonings and adding turmeric and and ginger is huge. You can do fresh turmeric. You can do fresh ginger. You can do ginger powder. You can do turmeric powder, adding in more immune boosting power to that meal, whether it's a soup, maybe it's spaghetti, whatever it is. It's just consciously saying, you know, I'm going to throw a little bit of magic in. Hey, this is the wellness essentials podcast. We for short. The WE Podcast is all things health and wellness, a place where women like you can come to be their authentic selves and be a part of a community that supports them in their health journey and every stage of life. This is the podcast for engaging health and wellness entertainment with actionable steps you can take into your everyday life. No topic is off limits when it comes to health and women's lifestyle. Let's face it, being a woman comes with all sorts of fun. Hear real, raw conversations and teachings from experts and everyday women who have been in your shoes and get inspired to make things happen and have the tools to do so. This is the WE Podcast. Hello, welcome to the Wellness Essentials Podcast. I am Erica Dvorak, and I am the Senior Communications Strategist here at Checkable Medical, and I will be your host today on this lovely WE Podcast episode. So today we are talking a little bit about eating for immunity and the easy ways for staying on track with your healthy eating goals. This is something that I'm super passionate about, especially that I know what you put in is what you get out of your body. So today we have an expert, Ms. Sarah T, who is a registered dietitian, nutritionist, and licensed dietitian with a master's in public health. Sarah's mantra is nutrition from the inside out as it serves for loving and living a nutritious and fulfilled life. She believes there is no need to focus on fad diets or to restrict yourself, but to find things and food that are healthy and that you can be passionate about. So each of us is different and it's in those differences that makes us who we are. Nutrition from the inside out is a way of thinking. It's not only about the food, recipes, fad diets, and things like that, but also about who you are on the inside, behaviors, lifestyle, emotions, blood work, personality, and overall deposition can greatly impact what is on the outside. And that's only the beginning. Sarah states that when we look inside, we can successfully work on our outward appearance and who we truly are and desire to be. It takes patience and time but it's all worth it in the end. I love that so, so much. So Sarah, thank you so much and welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Uh, Very, very, very honored to be here and um, can't wait to dive into all of this delicious information. Yes, yeah, I love to play on words there. (laughs) (laughs) I love it, I love it. So before we dive in, I would love, so I gave a little bit about, you know, your passion behind what you do, you know, registered dietitian, that's who you are, but tell us a little bit more about yourself personally, like your family, and then a little bit more professionally. Sure. So we are transplants to North Dakota. We moved here in 2017 for my husband's job. And I am just not, I'm not looking back. It is, it is home. All of our family is back in Illinois and and there are precious memories and our family. And we go back there quite a bit and we just are so excited to take each day as it is here and it's beautiful and it's wonderful, but the opportunities are just amazing here. So we love North Dakota. I'm glad to be working here and serving here, but also just raising my family. I have three children. Ethan is five and Isabella is three. And then I have a five month old Olivia. So time is, is busy, but you know, they're worth it. And and it's just, it keeps me on my toes uh, when you're trying to do meal planning, practice what I preach and, and, and schedules and sports, but it's, it's everything that I've, I've really dreamed about and it's fun. So personally, 
I'd say that kind of sums it up. We love being at home and spending time around the fire and and looking at our view out west and I'm picturing it right now and it just sets me back in a place of calm. Mm. It's so important nowadays, which yes. we, can, we can get into that in some of my my details. But professionally, um, I have been practicing for about 10 years in the field post um, graduate and I it just it just blows my mind how fast time has gone and and everything that I've been able to do and experiences. And and each one was so vital, so vital to where I am today. And each had its own cornerstone and prepared me for the new people that I'm going to meet. And, you know, I, I'm very thankful for that. And so I feel a little bit well-rounded and there's always things to learn and do and change as a professional. And we need to all be aware of that, that it's an ever-changing field especially dietetics and nutrition. And we need to be open to those changes. And I guess I could use the word humble too, humble to change that we don't want to be stuck in our ways, but if I can help somebody better then it's worth every bit of that time in preparing and learning from what's changing. One of the other things is that I have a small private practice here in North Dakota, and it has just been a real passion of mine to be able to do that on my own time and really not have those restrictions with my patients and clients. And I love every bit of it. The relationships are so worthwhile and just being able to be a part of people's journeys to be healthier versions of themselves is really truly what you said, my passion. Uh, We have a very tough world that we live in when it comes to body image and expectations. And I really want to go against that grain. And the people that I come in contact with to just find joy, true joy in what it is to be healthy for themselves and not compared to others. So I really enjoy having that private practice. And then I, um, I'm president of our local chapter of dietitians here and very thankful for that opportunity and just really getting to see us grow and just come together as dietitians for the state of North Dakota. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I have to say that I love your outlook on life just all around. I, when you were painting that picture of looking out West and mm-hmm. talking about your children and your family, I was like, oh, I love that. I love yeah. that. It sounds like you've been very intentional about building your life, which is very cool. And I love how you said that we're always changing and humble and we have to be humble to change. And I think that goes so well into the topic that we're talking about today. You know, we have to change the way we do things to help our body and help our mindsets. And it's a whole 360 approach. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about, you know, the food part about it, but you had said it's also that mental part too. So I think we'll talk a little about that as well. But today we want to talk about food and how it helps with immunity. And I mean, that's top of mind right now is is sickness (laughs) and going into the winter months, which I can't believe we're, we're talking about that now, but I mean, the, the snow up here up North will be flying sometime (laughs) soon. I mean, it could even fly tomorrow, (laughs) you know? So I just wanted to talk about, you know, what are some of those foods that we could eat to really prepare our body to help us when we are, you know, we've just had our kids go back to school, you know, how, how to prepare our bodies against colds and flus. And, you know, there's COVID as well. There's things that you can't really prevent it, but you can help make yourself feel a little better during it. So talking about some of those foods, what is your go-to list for immunity fighting foods that help like prevent sickness or help you while you are sick to improve a little bit faster? Sure. I'm sure the Google doctor, right? People can go and look and read things, but as a registered dietitian, it's, it's really our goal to be that resource. And I want to be that resource. So this is just amazing. And it's personal. I have my favorites and other dietitians have their favorites. <laughs> so Really putting a list on it, I would say is difficult. I'm not a one answer gal. Um, Everybody that knows me knows that I will tell you a story for a one word answer. (laughs) With that being said, I'm going to start with a scary one and I'm going to tell you why. Oysters. 
So I don't know if you've ever had them, but mm-hmm. I have been eating them for years. And at a meal my, I shared with my husband not too long ago, I said, you know what? It's, either I've never looked it up or I don't know what is the nutrition content, but just some of the vitamins and minerals that are packed in it, zinc, vitamin D, B12. Those are some big key fighters when it comes to uh, immune system, I guess I should say inflammation and um, really helping us be proactive with getting sick. So that's a scary one. And I'm sure some people who might be listening, you're thinking, well, she is crazy. I will not eat those. <laughs> kind of things. But what if it gave you that pack for two seconds? Again, that's not bringing you total joy, but it brings me joy, but it's so <laughs> full of nutrition, crab, lobsters, and mussels. Mm. Those are some of the food groups in the shellfish category that really help provide that good nutrition. And I know from some diet aspects, people might be avoiding some of those. Let's just say maybe their doctors have told them the fat content. I'm not scared of that. So if it's once in a while that you're having it and it's giving us good nutrition, go for it. Um, Peppers, colorful peppers believe it or not, on a list, they rank higher than um, some citrus. So Mm -hmm. colorful, rich peppers. And my motto when it comes to vegetables and fruits, they all have great nutrition value, but the darker, the deeper, the richer, the color think you're going to get more bang for your buck. So red peppers, that's one that you find a lot more being stated for its vitamin C. Um, Let's just say that that one's a big key player there for that. And I mean, I love them. They're sweet, uh, great for kids' snacks, packing lunches, amazing to put in. And when we talk about some recipes, I'll show you how I use those. Dark leafy greens. Kale is another scary one, but stick with me. Kale chips are (laughs) life-changing to make. So versatile to spread on any meal, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Deep, dark, rich nutrients, vitamin K, right? The C's, spinach, broccoli. Again, there's broccoli gets a bad name when it comes to gut health sometimes, or it being maybe a little gassy, even thyroid health. Broccoli is actually beneficial for that. So also an immune boosting food, strawberries. We eat that a lot, but maybe there's different ways that we can incorporate that in. If you don't want to just sit and eat a bowl of strawberries. I I mentioned citrus fruits, yogurt, believe it or not. And, you know, if you're struggling with dairy sensitivities, Let's find another, another pathway. Maybe it's just cow dairy. We can, we can focus on sheep and goat, almonds, turmeric, ginger. So I kind of wanted to start with some foods and then you can get into seasonings and adding turmeric and and ginger is huge. You can do fresh turmeric. You can do fresh ginger. You can do ginger powder. You can do turmeric powder. It changes a little bit of the color, but you're adding in more immune boosting power to that meal, whether it's a soup, maybe it's spaghetti, whatever it is, it's just consciously saying, you know, I'm going to throw a little bit of magic in. Um, That's kind of how I picture it. I think it's on Ratatouille or some Disney movie where they're like, blah, 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 blah. That's how I picture it in my head when I'm cooking with my spices. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) So I would say for sake of time and just a list that those are some of my favorites that you can add in. I mean, there's garlic, um, all the other different fruits and vegetables you want to add in. But when it comes to some of the top ones that contain those vitamins and minerals like D, zinc, C, B vitamins, and E, that would be great. Vitamin D food sources, I think is really important when it comes to being deficient in it. And if we are listening up here in the Northern Midwest, I want to tell you, get your vitamin D checked because when it comes to immune system and mental health, you don't want to be missing out on that. And foods like salmon, herring, canned tuna, egg yolks, mushrooms, which is a plant-based source, fortified foods like cow milk, soy milk, orange juice, cereal, and oatmeal. That's where you're going to get it from food. And then let's talk about supplementation on an individualized level but we want to focus on what's going into our mouth if we can, and then take that step back and look at what, what we might be missing. So I feel like I need to have a handout and, and send it to all my kids. but you <laughs> yes. know what? I, I'm going to plug my website. I might just eventually, you know, stick one up there and, and we can reference it later, but 
such important foods to get to support what's going on in the inside. Because our outside's not going to change if we're not feeding it um, and taking care of it. So it's it's a loaded question, I will say, because um, I have a can of worms that I've just opened. But <laughs> for time's sake, you know, when when it comes to immune boosting foods, I do want to just mention that it is a full picture with our immune systems. It's the food we eat. It is sleep. It is hydration. It is our gut health, which is a very popular topic now. It's up and coming in the dietetics field even more and being looked at more and how you can implement it. It's the foods we ingest, the stress, our lifestyle, our environment, and nutrition deficiencies. All of these things work together to contribute to our immune function and should be in sync with one another. And if they're not, something's going to be off and impact each other. And each one of those areas that I listed off all link together to help us fight what's coming at us on a day-to-day basis, not necessarily if it's COVID or the flu or we're feeling run down. We need to evaluate each piece of that puzzle. And that's something that I do do with my clients privately is look at that, but keep those in mind, guys, as we're fighting this immune battle on a day-to-day basis, just with everything that's going on around us. Yeah. I love it. It's a holistic approach, Mm -hmm. totally holistic approach. Yes. So with these foods, the question I had, so oysters, going back to oysters, the super scary one for me, when you were listing all of them off, I was like, oh yeah, like everything else is like my jam. Like I eat that stuff. I love that stuff. But the oysters thing, I'm like, oh, they're slimy. And so this, this question goes for all of them, I guess. Can you cook them and still have the same benefits? And it may change for each of the foods themselves, but for oysters, I could probably do those cooked rather than the raw, the raw. I just can't do, I will, I'll, I'll gag that up, (laughs) but if they're cooked, I'm more likely to eat it. And that might be the same thing for, I know some people just really don't like fresh raw vegetables, but they're fine with them cooked. So does that make a difference at all? I would say like an overall blanket. Have I done a case study side by side? No, but the overall goal, right, is to get the most that we can out of it. And my motto is, let's just say fresh frozen can. It'd be the same thing, fresh versus cooked. You are still going to get nutrition out of that. Will things change based on the heat structure, based on what else that you're adding to it? Sure, you might be adding more sodium to that food that you're getting cooked. But if you're mindful about it, you can still get a hefty amount of nutrition out of that. So I don't know if that explains it very well. I don't have the data and the numbers showing, okay, you're going to get this much of your B vitamin when it's raw versus when it's cooked. And that's something that I can look up and go farther. But for instance, like vitamin B12, it's in the 300% of an RDI. So if you're going to cook something and it's going to decrease that value, think you have that percentage to go down. Does that make sense? Like Mm -hmm. you're still not maybe getting that 300% of the direct daily intake of that B12 from that oyster, but you might be getting 250. So to think that to ingest something in a raw state and you're not going to do it, but to ingest something in a cooked state, I eat both, but not everybody can. It could be a medical thing. It could be a taste thing. You're still getting nutrition. And that's what I care about at the end of the day. So it's not as specific, it's not numbers, but it's that whole concept of taking it in and knowing that maybe you're not going to get the full amount of something, or it's the type of cooking method that you might use as well. That will change that. If you're boiling something in water, you're going to lose a little bit of into that, into the water. Um, So think of your water soluble vitamins. You're going to lose a little bit of that in cooking into that water. And I don't, I don't drink my water, but you know, you can, (laughs) you can maybe, (laughs) maybe you can make a broth out of it and therefore use some of that nutrition that's built out into the water. So there you go that would be one way to address it and think about it. Yeah. So make it work for you. Whatever works for you. Don't let it stop you. Yes. Just yes. do what's going to work. I like that. <laughs> yes. I like that a lot. And I noticed on this list too, and I've been learning about this as well. You know, I'm 
pregnant right now. Mm. Um, and so I'm, I'm on the prenatal nutrition stuff, but what really surprised me with the books that I've been reading is it's all about, you know, and I'm learning this too, prior to being pregnant, they'd been telling us for years, like no fat, low fat, but all of that was just heavy laden with sugars. And in this list of the things, you know, fruits and vegetables aside, because those usually don't have a lot of high fat content more on the carb side, but you know, those, those fishes that you were talking about, like, that's okay. Like eating fat is okay. You know, adding avocado to my eggs for breakfast and having it be a higher fat meal is actually okay because it's good fat. And so is that part of the composition that, that helps with fighting with immunity, or is that just kind of an added plus benefit? Think of what, what do you know? Let me come at you with a question. What do you think fat in your body is beneficial for? Well, after I've been doing research and learning, I mean, for brain overall brain health, I mean, your, your brain does have fat in it in order to operate. It needs fat to consume for your brain to work. And your brain is the master of everything in your body. Right. And you feel better. And I think a lot when it comes to omega threes and omega sixes, we need both. However, in our society, we tend to overeat omega-6. And those aren't as beneficial as say omega-3s like the fish oil. So, you know, there's links of omega fatty acids to heart disease that's going around, but don't fear fat. We need it. Our cells need it. Vitamin D, our fat soluble vitamins need it, A, D, E, and K. So if you're restricting your fat, you're missing out on key vitamins and minerals that need that fat to work for our immune system. It is extremely beneficial and the serving size. So when you have, I think there's about five grams of fat in an egg yolk. So don't leave those out. My egg white lovers, put them in, (laughs) don't fear the egg. Yes. Media can just take it away. Yes. And that cholesterol doesn't matter. That doesn't affect your real cholesterol. It's good cholesterol. You need that. You need the choline. Mm -hmm. You do. And even some surgeons, I remember practicing, I worked for lifetime seems many years ago, but I just remember when those news posts were coming out about the eggs and just uh, surgeons are going into these patients and finding that maybe it wasn't just fat. It's our lifestyle, it's stress, it's inflammation in our body. So we we want to look at the fat type, omega-3s, omega-6s, like the fatty fishes that I've listed verbally spoken on here. And so when it comes to that, you know, that pregnancy list, tuna, they tend to say watch just because the mercury, but if you're having it once in a while, and I love to actually bake mine, whether it be on a delicious piece of crusty whole grain bread. And you can sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top and, and cook it, you know, and have it portioned out, you know, that'd be wonderful. But some of the oils and the fats that have omega sixes that we tend to overconsume a lot of the times they're in refined products would be some soybeans some corn, safflower, sunflower oils. They're also found in nuts and seeds, meat, poultry, fish, and eggs. And so balance guys, it's all about balance and getting rid of this mindset of restriction. That's toxic. That's bad for your body. And that is also my goal is to help you just find this relationship between these foods and navigate it so that, you know, you can choose and then eat what you love. So good. So good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I love that clarification. So when talking about all these foods, This, I think, is another hot topic as well in the world of nutrition, organic versus not organic. And that comes with a hefty price tag, you know, and there's some, you know, they have, I think the dirty dozen and, and all of that, but what, I mean, does it matter for the immunity cause? And maybe you're just passionate about a few (laughs) that like, you're like always telling your clients, yes, you need to buy these organic because it's putting bad things into your body. Give us a little insight into your thoughts on organic versus not in terms of the immunity fighting. And then also like you, you just got to do this. You got it. It is such a hot topic, but I've been practicing from day one. And my motto is food first, right? If I am working with somebody who's in a food desert, and I'm not sure if if our listeners understand what that is, and that's somebody who doesn't have access to all of these grocery stores that are around us and maybe not farmer market, 
But what if they don't have access to that organic or locally grown or even frozen sometimes and they they have canned? At the end of the day, when I'm working with someone, I want to know what you're eating, where it's coming from. Then I can build you back up and say, okay, you know what? You're eating. Let's talk about it. Where can you get it? Organic is is a word, right? And it's one that can be used. I'm just going to say it for a marketing benefit at times because people will see it and buy it and just think, I got to get it. It's organic, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not the mindset I want you to have because yes, they do tend to be more expensive, which shopping around is really key on where you're getting your foods. Let me tell you that. But I just wanted to let our listeners know really what organic is. So U.S. Department of Agriculture, right? They define being organic as crops that are produced on farms that have not used most synthetic pesticides, herbicides, or fertilizer for three years before harvesting the food. There needs to be significant buffer zone. So think if you get a really windy day and there's a non-organic farm and an organic farm very close to each other more than likely there, there's going to be contamination. So we all mm-hmm. need to know about that. To decrease contamination from adjacent farmlands, farms also have to be free from any genetic engineering, ionizing radiation, or sewage sludge. Mm. As it relates to livestock, animals must be fed organic feed, live on organic land, and be raised without routine antibiotics or hormones. So another thing is free range doesn't mean organic. It just means animals weren't kept in such small enclosures. And the natural label on food means that there's no artificial flavoring or coloring ingredients, but it doesn't mean it's organic or free of pesticides. So I could do probably a whole session on label reading yeah. and just educating and these claims. There's even numbers found on stickers on your vegetables. Four is usually conventional. Three usually means conventional, but kind of modified. I don't know if you've seen some of these like flavored mm-hmm. grapes. And then nine is usually that organic code. So I learned that a long time ago when I was doing grocery store tours right out of my internship. And even that was kind of eye-opening for me. So think about that for a second. All of that has to take place for something to truly be organic. And I just hope in this day and age that people are truly, truly following those standards if they want to do that, because there are going to be people that will buy their label because it says organic because they're trusting that that's what it is. So in relation to the immune system, think of that body environment. That's what I want you to envision yourself as right now. What are we putting into that environment that's going to work for ourselves, our gut health, everything goes through that digestive tract. And if that's not healthy and functioning, you're really not going to get the best nutrient absorption from it. Those environmental stressors coming from those foods, the pesticides, that's going to wreak havoc on our bodies as well. So if you can change some of what they call the dirty dozen, and I will give you some of those foods, that would be a really great place to start that things that tend to be a little bit dirtier would be a great way to make a swap and start there. But other food groups that don't tend to maybe have that, that's a popular label, would be great to just get in in any way that you can. So it's really important to shop and to look at those labels. So things like strawberries, I will tend to to buy on the organic level. Spinach is is on that dirty dozen list. Kale, collards and mustard greens, nectars, apples, grapes. So a lot of fruit, celery, tomatoes, some bell peppers. Maybe that would be a great list to start if you're going to look at changing that composition. But think of things that grow on trees and in the ground and and what comes in contact with that. I want listeners to know that as a dietitian, I see that it can be overwhelming and it can be, it really can be overwhelming, but you have to start somewhere and start small and maybe pick a few ones organic. You're still making an impact, but fresh, frozen, canned please just start increasing your vegetable and fruit intake if you can. That's where you need to start. And then you can gradually make those changes to cleaning up a little bit about some of those food types. Again, just making it work for you. Mm -hmm. Just make it work for you. 
I love that. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So we've been chatting about like the things that you should eat to help with immunity. What are some of those foods that we should avoid that don't do us any good when it comes to fighting sickness or preventing all those icky little bugs from entering our body and and wreaking a little havoc? Mm -hmm. So I want you to think processed foods, think fast foods, think sugary foods. And you all know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Salty fried foods. And what really has that impact on our gut health? Because it's all going in through there. And how many times are we tired? And maybe there's a certain drive through that we like to go through or we're going to someone's house and we just want to have fun. There's a difference. I have never wanted you to eliminate something that you love, right? When it comes to food, that's not healthy. And you know what? You're going to want it more. If I say, do not do processed foods. So like the lunch meats and the hot dogs and all the hamburgers and the sausages and think of anything that goes through that plant, right? That maybe that company might not be investing quality food and ingredients into. You're going to consume that and you're going to consume the kind of junk stuff that comes along with it. But how many times is it we just want to have it and maybe it's that that's our treat. That's okay. I want you to know that that's okay. I'm not here to tell you no, but just be mindful that it is impacting what you crave. Those taste buds. Don't tell me that you've had one Cheeto <laughs> and that's it. Right? Uh-huh. One uh-huh. Oreo. There is a reason why food scientists know what they're doing. When you eat one, you just get that taste <laughs> for more. Yes. Pringles has once you pop, you can't stop. Goodness gracious. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a Pringles girl. I will tell you that I do enjoy a Cheeto once in a while, but I have found other brands that are. I hate to use the word cleaner, but just better ingredients. And it allows me to still feel like I'm having a treat. And that's pretty fantastic. And I don't really miss the bad stuff. So I practice what I preach. Y'all, I really need to to do it too, because, you know, mom of three, busy Mm -hmm. working some and taking care of your home. I have learned we have to take care of ourselves if we're going to take care of our family. And that comes with what goes into our body. So that is my list and it is a very big list, but take that time to really step back. And I encourage you to get a sheet of paper out and start logging that food and seeing what's going in during the week and on the weekend. And then maybe taking one thing and making a change. Mm -hmm. I love that. The team at Checkable Medical is famously fussy about what goes into their bodies. Optimal health at every stage and every age is key to living a life you love. Choose better supplements with superior ingredients in simple, easy-to-absorb formats that fit into your daily life. Feel your best with Checkable Wellness. If you're ready to get started, check out checkablewellness.com for more details. Your healthcare begins at home. What goes in is what you get out. And I I think as I get older, I start to realize like how foods are affecting me. Yep. And so I will notice, you know, like the other day I had just a little bit of a tickle and I ended up because it was on a weekend and I'll, I'll eat pretty healthy during the week and I'll allow myself some indulgence on the weekend. And I, yes. I ate some ice cream and then literally within like hours, that little tickle became into like a full blown deal. And it was just like, it was another reminder of just what you're putting in is what you're getting out. Like all that sugar that I put in my body, although it was delicious and then you should be able to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. When you're starting to feel something coming on, be mindful and start treating yourself from the inside and start adding in those, like the garlic and the ginger and and eating peppers, even though you kind of don't want to, you know, I, I would prefer to eat that ice cream cone and relax a little bit on the weekend because I've done so good during the week, but it's like, you know, that's going to affect me the whole next week having the cold. And so being mindful of what Mm -hmm. you put in your body. So yeah, so good. So good. Yeah. Stay away from the process as much as you can, but give yourself a treat because we all got to live. I got to live a little bit. We do. And, and the word that I'd say, you know, my friends and I talk about, especially as women, and if this is the group that we're focusing on, you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you listen on, awesome. You deserve grace too, Mm -hmm. because we need to give ourselves 
grace in this very busy season of life, whatever season of life that's in, and know that that's part of it. You know, I'm not my best person if I don't feel good and I can't do things. And so I might want that cup of coffee one morning if I'm not feeling good, but you know, one of my favorite go-tos and I'm not making a claim for this. I just feel like it really kind of helps me. I do a little bit of our locally raised honey. I love three bears, honey. There's a plug at that. Um, Mm -hmm. I love local anything. If I can support our people, I try, but I do a little bit of honey and some hot water and apple cider vinegar. And that's just kind of my concoction and maybe put some ginger in there when I'm starting to feel icky. And it's not my favorite pick me up in the morning, but I know that that helps me. And gives my body a break from even that caffeine that can send, can play on the, those adrenals and that anxiousness. And, and when you're not feeling good, you, you want to take that step back and give your body that rest that it needs. And it could be rest from fun foods, right? It could be rest from going out. It could be rest from staying up late and watching that favorite show. So think of it as that too, is you just need to give your body that rest in all aspects, not just food, but everything that it will all impact that immunity too. Mm-hmm. And I'm right there with you on that apple cider vinegar drink. Like I do the same exact thing when like a cold's coming on or something, I will do that. And for those of you that don't like apple cider vinegar, like the, there are gummies that exist and I'll give a little plug for checkable where we have some awesome apple cider vinegar gummies and that you could buy those and have two of those that it has the same effect as, you know, like a, a little cup of um, apple cider vinegar mixed with water and, and honey. So take it any way you can, but it's a big helper. It is for sure. It's um, a natural cure for good benefits. I would like to say, I probably can't say cure, but I will say from experience, (laughs) it has helped me and benefited me. So I'm not going to make any claims, but it has definitely helped me. When I drink it, I feel like it kills whatever's down there. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I know like a little burning. (laughs) <laughs> yes. And you can see like the live culture. Yeah. With the mother. Yeah. I do the brag and I just, I'm like, okay, I just feel like it's killing it. And, and, you know, in our field of practice, we're really evidence-based and I don't like making claims, but, you know, even talking with my endocrinologist, you know, if something's going to work, right. Why not do it? Exactly. That's kind of like our motto. And in my my own private practice, I will be evidence-based, but I am so all about trying things for you and myself that are going to work and help you be better and be you. And if it helps, why not? So why can't both of those marry together? Yes. And I really feel like nutrition is evolving to that um, with the integrative and functional medicine aspects of nutrition. That makes me so happy. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So, um, you gave the list, uh, awesome, awesome list that made me kind of hungry because of the delicious foods of what we can eat for immunity. But what are some quick snack ideas? Cause people like, they look at the list and they're like, okay, great. But then they go to the fridge and they're starving and they're like, well, I don't want to just like throw a pepper in my mouth. What are some quick snack ideas or some good dinner ideas that will help maybe those who have uh, children as well, that are kind of good for the whole family? Awesome. I am not a short order cook. And I swear that comes from hearing my mom say it because we (laughs) were not given whatever we could. And so my motto with my children was to eat. So I aim to try and serve my snacks and my meals for my children and family. So some of my favorite snacks and get your pens and papers out, um, make a grocery list, or I challenge you to take your computer and your phone to your fridge and go open it up. I am all about application. So mini peppers, Mm. right? We talked about peppers, but what about some of that tzatziki? I mentioned yogurt has good benefits to it as well. So you can buy them or you can even make a quick one for the whole week with a little bit of garlic and dill and lemon juice and pinch of sea salt and cucumbers and mix that around. Or you can get your favorite hummus. Sprinkle some hemp or flaxseed on top, right? To get those nuts and seeds, to get that protein, to get that fat, all good things that we need to help our bodies fight and dip those veggies in. It could be not just mini peppers. It could be if your game is cauliflower and broccoli raw, you could do it cooked. I'm all about a good roasted vegetable that you can eat hot or cold. Mm. That would be a wonderful snack. And my kids love mini peppers dipped in, in hummus, but for kids, I might do a little bit of the chocolate hummus. The nutrition value isn't insane. It's not extremely different, but maybe your kiddo 
will only do something with that. So then that's where I might do a strawberry dipped in some chocolate hummus. And that might be a treat and a fun treat for an adult where you're still getting good, good nutrition and protein. Frozen blueberries and slivered almonds. I've been saying this one Mm. for years. So what the frozen blueberries will do, and there's the antioxidants in there and that plays on our our bodies as well, but they're going to melt in the fridge. So if you're prepping to go to work or you just want to prep some snacks or you leave it out, the blueberries will melt a little bit into the slivered almonds and then kind of flavor those almonds. And so it's a little bit of a juice in there and you could sprinkle the hemp, the flax or the chia on top as well, just to get a little bit of nutrition. But that one's a fun one and a quick one. And one you can eat with a spoon. Cause I love eating with utensils when I can, it just makes me feel like I'm slowing down and taking my time. Another one, half of a sweet potato. There's a lot of good nutrition in that. Don't be afraid of the carbohydrates. People please get off this keto kick. <laughs> um, you know, there's a reason why keto was invented and more than likely the population doesn't have what it was <laughs> made for. Granted, that's a whole nother conversation and it's a time and place for that. But anyway, <laughs> half a sweet potato with some cinnamon, a little bit of a nut butter on top, whatever mm. you'd like. I'm not against peanut butter, but you know, choose wisely. And I love a little bit of pecan. So keep your serving sizes, everybody. Uh, about an ounce. If you right now cup your hand and you look inside that little part right underneath where your fingers are in that cup, that's about an ounce is your serving size of nut to go on there. And you could drizzle a little bit of honey on top. Now that one is a little bit more luxurious, I should say, (laughs) but still a wonderful nutrition packed snack. That's also going to keep you full. And then tuna So what you could do is make some tuna ahead of time. I'm okay. It doesn't have to just be for a meal. You could do a couple ounces of tuna with, um, on a big pepper, or you can do on like a butter lettuce leaf or with a few crackers. I love, I'm not like a huge brand, but I am into right. Currently I'm dairy free and gluten free in whatever way, shape or form that I can. And I love the simple mills. Plus I just was realizing that their sunflowers are from Minnesota. Oh, so I have a mission to reach out to them, but I do like a CD cracker with it. If I would like a little bit of a carb again, portion one to two ounces and that's okay. You could do smoked salmon with a little bit of tzatziki on a cracker or however you want to take it. Or maybe you just stick it in a bowl, mix it all together. You could even throw a hard boiled egg in there, whatever your jam, Mm -hmm. right? And that might not be everybody's cup of tea, but (laughs) um, some people don't mind funky snacks uh, at certain times of day. And so I'd say those are a few that came to mind when I was brainstorming these, but You could do anything, chicken breast with a little hummus and avocado. So do about an ounce or two of each one, stick it in a bowl and eat it. And you're getting something right from a bunch of food categories. So those are some snacks. Hope you guys took some notes. So good. Hungry too. It's not even lunch. Yes, I know. I know. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So some meals. We love Asian cooking. We have Asian in our family. My husband's actually half Chinese. And if he listens to this, uh, you know, there's my plug, but so (laughs) Asian is very important. Cooking is very important in our family and just exposing that culture. My children also love ethnic food. So last night for supper, this was not on purpose, but we, I made a black pepper tofu is what it's called dish. But um, the recipe that it was inspired by, I tend to look at a recipe a lot of the times and then I will stem off and I just kind of make up my own and, and customize it to what I need it to be. So it had some tofu and red pepper and green onions sauteed. I used tamari. So a gluten-free soy sauce. You can do the low sodium and just cook it that way with fresh ginger and fresh garlic. So again, lots of immune boosting yeah. to serve my family. I do steam rice, but you can do quinoa. You can do whatever you'd like 
to put that on top, but traditionally you would do a steamed white rice and again, portion. So half a cup to a cup, if you are trying to be mindful and maybe we're working on deficits um, to help with weight loss um, healthfully, but you're not starving yourself, you can have a little bit. That's fine because I'm about to give you a heck of a lot of fiber in that meal. And then I served bok choy, which it looks like celery is I guess what I could give you a vision to it, but I do baby bok choy. So the bottom reminds me of celery and the top has this leafy green and I cut off just that bottom nub part and you can either saute it with this adorable little uh, stalk or I chop it up so that my kiddos will eat it. And I served that in a bowl and sesame seeds have a little bit of nutrition in it. You can sprinkle that on top and you've just given yourself this beautiful plant-based Meatless Monday is what we do in our house a lot of the times. Plant based, high nutrition, great immune boosting meal that tastes wonderful. Mm. That's one of my favorite dishes to cook. And I cook with tofu quite a bit. Another one I would say, let's lighten it up a strawberry salad. So I was thinking, okay, what can we do to lighten it up? Rotisserie chicken, please make this a part of your routine if that is your game. Mm-hmm. Cut it up while it's hot. It shreds easily. Stick it in a Tupperware. You can use it for everything. Keep the bone, fill it up with some water and, and herbs and make yourself a broth. You can either sip on that or use it for a soup dish, which I will talk about next. Rotisserie chicken, you can shred it with some uh, slivered almonds, fresh strawberries, spinach and kale, goat cheese crumbles. I tend to do um, alternative to cow milk. So goat cheese crumbles. Um, or you can do some fresh parm and then dressing. You can do a simple olive oil with um, seasonings. Um, I tend to like poppy seed because it's on that dairy free. It's an oil based, but I don't overdo it. Or you can make like a, you can find like a strawberry balsamic or something like that and drizzle it over. And that would be great for dinner. My kiddos eat salad, not perfectly every time, but that would be something that you could maybe prep all of your ingredients and then grab it put it together for the work week or lunches and bam, you're done. All of those ingredients tend to store pretty well in your fridge. And then my last one, I'm going to say soup. We're coming into a chilly fall, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's cold. Thursdays are going to be soup days in our house. And so one inspired, you know, uh, my mother-in-law always made the chicken, a simple chicken soup. So Using that rotisserie and even the bones from the broth, if you're bold enough and have time, you don't have to do it. Make that base vegetable. So your carrots, your celery, get some onion, fresh garlic, fresh ginger. You're going to just saute that in a little bit of olive oil. And then you're going to build that up, put in your broth that you've either just made or another broth. And then I tend to put in a rice, a quinoa, or a noodle at the end. but This is what we call kind of a kanji. So you can either make it like a chicken noodle soup, uh, for lack of a better word, or a kanji, which is more of an Asian-based soup when we're sick. I make this for my kids. So browning your rice at the bottom, adding in these fresh vegetables, building it up with your broth, and then letting it simmer and cook. It's going to be this thick, comforting, creamy, without the dairy soup that you can add in um, your chicken to your, if you have more rotisserie chicken and it's full of garlic and ginger and vegetables. You can cut up green onions on top, um, sprinkle some sesame seeds, maybe a little crunch from water chestnuts and even throw in a little bit of egg on top. And that will just give you this comforting, I guess I use the word healing soup when we're not feeling good or even preventative. And you can get that same aspect from a chicken noodle soup. You can omit the noodles and just have the vegetables and the broth and the flavors to really help soothe as it goes down. And I actually kind of find that it's stress relieving because it's just this warm, sweet soups. And it just allows you to slow down and enjoy all of those intense flavors coming from those dishes. Oh my goodness, Sarah, my stomach is rumbling right now. I literally, it's just like, I'm like, st- 
starving <laughs> right now. Like thinking of all these, writing them down. I'm like, oh my goodness, I want all of these right now. They sound so tasty and delicious and like achievable, like super easy to actually like go in and, and make some of them might be a little more, take a little more time, like the soup. But then there's some super easy ones. So you can pick and choose like what mood you're in, what time, the amount of time you have in a day and then make it work for you. Like we've been saying this whole time, but so good, so good. And we'll be teasing some of these probably on our social, some of these little recipes. So you want to take a look at, um, at Checkable Medical on Instagram to make sure that you, uh, you get some of these recipes if you missed them and weren't able to write them down. So I know that we promised that we would talk about some tips and tricks to staying on track with eating healthy. I'm wondering, Sarah, if you would be open to either like an Instagram live or another little mini podcast to talk about that. I would. And for time's sake, be realistic, be individual and make a few small goals and don't tell yourself you can't because you will. That was the first one that I had on there. Mm, love that. And I would love to do that. If you want to do Instagram live, yeah. I'm game for that too. I tell you, I'm a, I'm a chatty Kathy, <laughs> but my relationship with food is strong and real. And I wanted to paint those recipes. Yes, I've been told my relationship with food is a bit intimate and it is. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's so good. I love it. I just want to like cuddle up with like a blanket and talk yeah. delicious food all day. It's so nice. But yeah, we'll do that. So that's a teaser. So you'll have to stay tuned on when we're going to dive in more with Sarah on the tips and tricks for staying on track with healthy eating. But Sarah, before we go, where the heck can the listeners find you? I have a new website that just went live. This has been in the works for a little bit. You'll find me under Inspire Nutrition. That is my private practice name, but my site is kind of housed with a bunch of the things that I love and go. So my website is www.inspirenutritionnd.com. And then you'll find me on Instagram at inspire underscore nutrition underscore nd. I would love to have you guys reach out, spread the word. You know, my email's on there as well at inspire.nutritionnd at gmail.com. Reach out. I'd love to be a resource for you and, and if there's goals that you have, but check it out, check out my website, get to know me a little bit more, um, leave me a comment, reach out. And my Instagram is where I like to do goofy videos and post what I'm cooking and there's drool worthy things on there. I am not a photographer. I'm real life. Let me just take a picture of my food before I put it in my mouth. <laughs> oh, but I will have to say they look delicious. I did take a stink peek and they look delicious. So even though she's not a professional photographer, they will still make no. you drool. So good. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for being on today. I just really appreciate your knowledge and your heart towards healthy eating and people just, you know, helping themselves from the inside out. That's a passion of mine, a passion of ours at Checkable Medical. So just so very thankful to having you on today. And then I also want to say for listeners, if you like what you hear, make sure that you subscribe on your favorite platform and then do give us a follow on your favorite social media. You can find us at most of social media platforms at Checkable Medical. So don't hesitate to stay in the know because we'll have lots of goodies just like all of Sarah's info today. So again, Sarah, thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the We Podcast as much as us. If you want more wellness goodies, head over to the wellnessessentialspodcast.com for show notes, links, and resources mentioned in today's podcast. Remember to hit subscribe on your favorite podcast platform to get all the wellness details as soon as they are released. Cheers to living your healthiest and happiest life.